Oh, oh yeah. Wow. It's that food that make you sing. I, yeah, I'm like literally inhaling this right now. <laughs> Looking for your face. So let's rewind a couple of weeks. One of the most interesting shifts to come out of the pandemic was the rise of food businesses that existed entirely on Instagram. On a lot of these businesses, the menus posted on Instagram, you order on Instagram. I, I always think about how the best restaurants in the world we may never get to try because they can't afford, you know, a brick and mortar space from their personal savings. But Instagram introduced us to this whole crop of unbelievably talented chefs, all making food that felt really unique to them. And that's how I found Black Reek and Vegan. It takes an actual village to run a restaurant. It takes cooks to cook the food, a chef to design the menu, social media people to get the word out, an operations person to make sure that everything's running smoothly. At Black Reek and Vegan, Liana is all of those things. I sold out within an hour. Wow. We're up in the Bronx. And are we in Harlem? Oh, it's really early. <laughs> We're here to watch Leon and her team prep. My name is Liana Blount. I'm from the Bronx, and I'm the owner and chef of Black Vegan Vegan, soul food and Puerto Rican food with a vegan twist. You're a great older cousin. Come here at 6 a.m. Yeah, she's loyal. I've never seen so many vegetable bouillon cubes. I brought it to the lady. She's like, you want me to scan it one by one? I said, it's 22. Like, oh. <laughs> and what are those plantains for? It's to make pastelon. Oh, those are for pastelon. We're working on the deadline, so we have to make sure that everything is done by at least 11 o'clock. Both of my drivers have to be here by 12. Okay, got it. And on the menu, we're doing chopped cheese, batelios, beef fish and guava and cheese pasta alone, and burgers, and soup. I know, it's That's huge. That's that yeah. kitchen pot. Does the energy like pick up the closer to 11 that it gets? It just depends on the week. Before I got into the kitchen space that I'm in now, I was working from home. You were doing all the food at home? All the food at home. You were frying in your apartment? Yes. Oh, Don't man. tell anybody. <laughs> all my counter spaces and some side tables. I just made it work. You just have to make it work. I am not vegan, but I was raised I was I was raised vegetarian though, so this food is speaking my language. Black Greek and vegan. What did it start as? The thought in 2016 when I first went vegan, I was at home making vegan bacalios and all my friends loved it, my family loved it. Events and baby showers, they're like, come make the bacalios. I'm like, all right. They're like, it tastes just like me. I can't believe it with the sauce. They're like, don't forget the sauce. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> I swear, I don't know what I'm doing. Before the pandemic, I was just always working. I used to do a lot of catering jobs. I used to bartend and it was like rare that I was home and doing what I love to do, which was cook. When the pandemic slowed all of that down, I had time to get creative and cook for the family and post it. I maybe had like almost 100 followers yeah. and it blew up when I posted the vanilla plate. Y'all see that? Just like Benin. This is jackfruit. And they're like, what? Vegan Brunel? How? Where? Do you see Puerto Rican food as like meat heavy? A lot of pig, a yeah. lot of beef. When they see certain things that are made vegan, they're like, what, yeah. what does it taste like? All the comments, they go in berserk. <laughs> they be cracking me up. Due to pandemic, and I wasn't going to work. All the free time I had, I just took it to start doing recipes and getting creative. Vegan relleno de papa, and vegan acapurias, and vegan this, and vegan that. They're like, oh, we want more. Going from Instagram page to like food business, what did it take to like get that up and running? It came to a point that they wanted to try it. So I'm like, okay. It took me just posting that menu, April 6, 2020. I'll never forget okay. that date. Thank you so much. I underestimated myself and I sold out within an hour. Black Recon Vegan, this is, woo! These empanadas here, so good. 
I'm always selling You're out. You're always selling out. Yeah, I'm always selling out. That's awesome. Yeah. Fastest you've ever sold out. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll go to Canva and I'll like jazz it up there and then I'll post like the little flyer there. I don't know if I'm gonna do potato salad. I don't think I am. So you have a full-time job and you're also doing black vegan vegan. Mm. Smells really good. How do you balance between doing your full-time job and running this how. business? I don't know how. Monday through Wednesday after work, I'll go to the markets. So okay. from like four to eight or nine, however okay. long it takes me, I'm at the markets getting stuff. I'm at the school between Monday and Wednesday, and okay. then I'm prepping Wednesday evening to like Friday wow. to get ready for the weekend service. Does this vegan cheese melt like mozzarella? Yeah, yeah. but you have to make sure that you cover it so that when it bakes, it like oh, moistens. Okay. Because if it's uncovered, then it'll be like like sticks. And you want to put it in now or wait? I want to put it in now. Right. We got to start um, packing soon. Oh, that baby melted. We have a, a lot of hits. The pastelon, the vanille, oyster mushroom burgers, mm. the mocktails, whenever I have the strength to do it. What are those made with? They're made with a secret ingredient that I can't say, but they are fair made enough, with Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. I just chose this day to work on my new recipe, coquito tres leches. This is the coquito, and when you chill it, it gets a little thick. Coquito is a big thing in Hispanic households during the holidays. All right, now I'm gonna chill it. I just thought infusing it with a dessert. I'll execute the recipe, and if I like it, I'll take a picture with my iPhone. I'm very big on how it's gonna look on Instagram with my little uh, Surface replica. My mouth is watering right now. And then I'm thinking about what time am I gonna post? So I'll post a call to action. Yeah, yeah. So I'll ask them a question, do you want this on the menu? And yeah. then everyone's like, hell yeah, why are yeah. you even asking? And then the comments start flooding in. It's doing better than I thought. <laughs> Crying inside, sick of you. 15 minutes, almost 300 likes and a couple comments. We have a new menu item. Oh, wow. It's the best breakfast I've ever had. <laughs> Did you ever cook in a professional kitchen? No. Wow. So good. Have there ever been moments where you like make something and it just doesn't hit the yeah. way you wanted it to? Mm -hmm. yeah. I did like a, a jerk chicken. The pictures looked amazing. And so everyone yeah. was like, oh, I want to try it, I want to try it. Oh, the customer was like, it was like salty or the texture was weird. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll never put that on a menu again. But I always like to consult with my customers and my community and see what they want and when they, what they want to try. You're really underselling yourself here because yeah. most restaurants, they've got like a social media manager, an operations director, a finance director, a executive chef. You're an executive chef. Mm -hmm. You're the photographer. You're the social media person. I'm you're the, the grocery cook. shopper, yes, you're the, the prep shopper. cook, you're the line cook, finance director, you're running payroll, you're yeah. running the operations, like you're yeah. overseeing the deliveries, like you're doing like I'm at least 10, service, 10 jobs. Yeah. yeah. Now that you broke it down yeah. like that, <laughs> I'm just like so used to it. Like it's just second nature to me. Certain produce that I use, there's not much of it going on in the Bronx. So I do have to travel like Manhattan, Harlem, Jersey to get certain things that I need. There was one time I traveled to Queens, but I was by accident, but I ended up in Queens. <laughs> How many cans again did you have? 56. Prices of food, especially vegan food, has been skyrocketing. I used to get a three pound box of like mushrooms for $12, now it's 20, which wow. is like a big, huge jump. Yeah. Is it a goal to sort of keep the food affordable yes. for people? Mm -hmm. I'm just doing what's gonna get the food in that customer's hand in the end of the day. I feel like I did when I was a kid, where it would, I would just like want to stir everything. I, would, I just wanted to like get involved. And my mom was like. <laughs> What's the ingredient you probably go through the most of? Sofrito. We've been here for close to four and a half hours. I'm really impressed at just like how chill the vibes are in here right now. So in about half an hour, the delivery drivers will start to get here. So there's a real deadline they're up against. So there's definitely like, the pace is picking up. 
What was the count on the soup? It's a well-oiled machine. Like this is incredibly difficult and they make it look really easy, honestly. I've done putting together a hundred items, keeping food hot, like all of these things are so hard and they've just like thought through every situation. And can you put more like two right there. strips okay. there? All right, go ahead. Some of your staff is your family, right? Yes. <laughs> We all laughing and eating the food and springing ideas off each other. Natalia, she lives in PA, and she comes. She'll be like, "All right, I'm gonna come down to New York and wow. help you and show like find places to stay." That's amazing. Are the logistics of delivery hard? Because like some businesses, it's like, I'll be here from nine to five, come pick it up. But you guys are actually going and delivering it. I was just here the other day, delivering to this same lady. Oh, really? Yeah. Nope. 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 On Fridays, she'll send me the list of all the customers, all the deliveries I need to make. And I'll just pre-route all the options. Um, I don't know why you can't show them the, the, the address though, chill. So right now I'm just doing the ones in Harlem. Then after this, we'll be heading to the Boogie Down Bronx. I am not vegan. As a Latino, I love to support Black Greek and vegan because it literally shows how you can still remain within your culture while eating vegan. And I think it's something that's needed in our community. So I just found a way, though I could shoot my shot. Hey, if you need a driver, I'm willing to help. Hi. You're a delivery for Black Beauty. Y'all gonna see my son. Y'all gonna see the menu. Y'all gonna see the flags. It seems like you really tapped into something that people wanted. They were looking for vegan versions of either their like childhood favorites or just like food, a cuisine that they really love. I was surrounded by my Puerto Rican mom and uncle and grandmother. My mom, she raised us pretty much kind of alone and she worked a lot. When my mom was at work and me and my brother and my sister, we were home, I was in charge of cooking the meals for us um, when my mom didn't have a chance to. So that kind of, I guess, grew my love for cooking because I saw it as a love gesture as well. I look at my page and I'm just like in awe. I do suffer from imposter syndrome because I don't, understand how this came about and that it's mine. Yes, look at that reaction. I'm just surprised that every time I put out a menu, people are ordering, and every time I'm at a pop-up, people are online waiting for that food. I'm grateful for that, I don't even know what to say. We wanna put Black Week and Vegan everywhere. We wanna put products in stores. That's the overall goal. You, you missed his dance, he was hype. <laughs> Let's have a great one. Oh, definitely. Enjoy. Do you take vacations? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was like, I had to think about that. I was like, that's the last vacation that sucks.